Today, we're going to talk about linear interpolation. Let's get started. Before we get too far into our main topic for today, I want to back up and cover two important items that I didn't have time to talk about last week. Last week, we talked about texture maps. We discussed how the game engine makes a new version of the texture when you import it, a version that's compressed. Well, there's one other thing that the game engine's texture importer does. It makes MIP maps. MIP maps are a series of progressively smaller versions of the texture that look like this. Each one is half as large as the previous version in both dimensions, and they're all stored together as a single file with the original texture. When your shader asks for a sample of the texture, the graphics hardware figures out which of the MIP levels to sample based on several factors, including how big on the screen the texture is and what the angle is between the polygon and the camera. So for example, if the texture were about this big on the screen, it would sample the highest level MIP map. But if the object were further away and the texture needed to be smaller on the screen, it might sample one of these MIP maps way down here at the end of the chain. Without MIP maps, the texture sampler has to sample the largest version of the texture all the time. And if the texture is smaller on the screen or further away than it needs to be, you end up with more texture pixels than screen pixels. This causes pixel shimmer and sizzle. This was a common artifact on very early 3D hardware, such as the PlayStation 1. That hardware didn't support MIP maps or texture filtering, so there was a lot of texture sizzle, like you can see here. But more modern hardware is able to fix this by simply sampling from smaller versions of the texture, the lower MIPs, when objects are further away. Another important thing to know about MIP maps is that the game engine can dynamically load and unload them from graphics memory depending on when they're needed. Have you ever loaded into a level of a game and everything looked really blurry for a few seconds and then suddenly it got sharper? Well, this was caused by the game engine first loading in the lower resolution MIP maps, the ones down here on the chain, and then loading in the higher resolution MIP maps later uh, because they load slower. If objects get really far away from the camera, the game engine can drop the high, high resolution MIPS uh, to make space in memory for other textures uh, that are higher priority. Also, if objects get really far away from the camera, the game engine can then drop the high resolution MIP maps to make space in memory for other textures that are higher priority. So it's important for your textures to have MIP maps, both to help with texture filtering and to help the engine with texture memory management. Luckily, this is something that's done automatically, but it's still important to understand that it's being done. Next, let's take a look at how to add textures to your shader. So here in Unreal, if I right click and type sample, you can see I get this item here called texture sample, and I can just click and choose that. And then over here on the settings panel, I can select which texture I want to use. So I just drop down this box, and then if I know the name, I can just type it in. For example, I know that I want my cobblestones texture, so I'm going to pick that one. And now you can see I get a little preview of it here on the sampler, and then I can just click and drag from the RGB port of the texture sample to the port on the root node that I want to plug it into. So in this case, I'm going to plug it into base color. And now you can see that my cobblestones diffuse texture or base color texture is plugged into the base color on my root. And so we get the preview window with a nice colored version showing the texture. Let's switch over and take a look at how it's done in Unity. All right, here we are in Unity, and we have an empty shader. And I can just hit the space bar to bring up the Create Node menu. Then I'm just going to type Sample, just like I did in Unreal, and pick Sample Texture 2D. And that creates a 2D texture sampler. Then I'm going to click on this little circle right here to select which of its textures that I want. So then it brings up this window that has all of the textures in my project. 
And just like I did in Unreal, I'm going to pick the Cobblestones one. And you can see the Cobblestones preview here. Then I can just grab the RGBA output of my texture sample and drag a wire and drop it onto my base color input socket on my master stack. Now if I come over here to my preview window, you can see that I've applied my texture uh, to my shader. So now I'm getting the nice cobblestones in the viewport. So that's how you add new textures. And you can do the same thing for normal maps and for smoothness maps and um, all the other textures that you need in your project. All right, so that's a quick overview of both MIP maps and how to add textures to your shader. Let's jump in and talk about linear interpolation now. So there are a lot of times when you're making a shader when you want to be able to blend two things together using a third value. Uh, so let's take a look at this example. Here I have a red color and here I have a blue color and then here I have a static value. And what I want to do is when this value is zero, I want my result to be red. And when this value is one, I want my result to be blue. Well, two weeks ago in our video, we talked about some simple math nodes. Uh, and so today we're going to use those math nodes to do this blending. So I'm going to drag this out and create a multiply node. And so just getting the blue is pretty easy. All I have to do is wire my value and multiply it with my uh, blue color. So now uh, when my value is zero, I get black. And when my value is one, I get blue. Well, we also need to introduce the red here. Uh, so for the red, I'm gonna do things just a little bit differently. I'm also gonna multiply so I'm going to drag this out and type multiply here to create a multiply node. And then instead of multiplying by uh, my value here, I'm going to multiply by the opposite. And so I'm going to add a one minus node. Now we did talk about this two weeks ago. If I have a value and I use and I plug it into one minus or I uh, do the math equation one minus this value, it's going to give me the opposite of this value. So for example, if this value is 0 0.25, the result of the one minus is going to give me a value of 0 0.75. So it's like inverting it basically. Okay, so I'm going to multiply my red instead of multiplying it by my value. I'm going to multiply it by one minus my value. And so the behavior of this red multiply is going to be the opposite of the behavior of this blue multiply. So with blue, when my value here is one, I get blue. And when it's zero, I get black. But with red, when my value here is zero, I get the full red color. But it's one, it's one, I get black. So now you can see I've got this little teeter-totter thing going on where this color is black and this color is the actual color. And then when I switch it to zero, now I've got this color and this color is black. So the only thing left to do is just to add the results of these two things together, which I can do like this. And so now I have uh, a little math formula where the higher I make this number, the closer this gets to one, the more blue I'm blending. And the closer it gets to zero, the more red I'm blending. So right now it's zero, and my result here is red. And when I set it to one, my result here is blue. Pretty cool. What happens if I set it to 0 0.5? Oh, I get purple. <laughs> because it's halfway blended in between red and blue. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Well, what if you want to do the same thing without uh, having all of this mess in between? There's a cool node built in, and if I just search for lerp, you can see that there's uh, this node called lerp. And what this node does is exactly what's going on here with these three nodes. So I'm going to plug my red into A, and I'm going to plug my blue into B, and I'm going to plug my uh, result value, or my you know, the value that I'm using to drive the whole thing into this T socket. Now you can see that I'm getting the same result from my lerp node uh, 
as I'm getting from these four nodes. So again, if I switch it to zero, I get red. If I switch it to one, I get blue. If I switch it to 0 0.5, I get purple. And the closer I am to zero, the more red I'm gonna get. And the closer I am to blue, the more blue that I'm gonna get. So this one node called Lerp does the same thing as all of these. So I'm just gonna delete all of these for now because it's much cleaner to do it with just one node. And that's the purpose of this Lerp node. <laughs> it's kind of clean it up to make it so you don't have to multiply, then multiply by the inverse and add together. All those things, you can just use this one single node. That's great. And the word Lerp is uh, kind of a squished together version of the word linear interpolation, which is our topic for today. And basically what we're doing is just blending two things together. So in this example, we've been blending color and you can also blend single values. So if I add two float values here, I'll make this float zero and I'll make this float one. I can do the same thing, pass these in. So when this value is zero, I'm gonna get the float zero, which looks like black. And when this value is one, I'm gonna get float one, which looks like white. Pretty neat. So I can blend color. I can blend numbers. <laughs> and color is really just uh, three channel numbers. It's pretty much the same thing. And I can also blend textures. So here are some texture maps that I've created and I'll bring these over. So now if I plug my texture sample 2D, my first one into the A of my Lerp and my second one into the B of my Lerp. All right, so now my value is one. So I'm getting my second texture here. And if my value is zero, then I get my first texture here, which is the cobblestones. So if I want to blend halfway in between uh, the first and the second texture, I can give it as uh, 0 0.5. And now I've got a blend, which is a half of my second texture and half of my first texture. So that's a pretty cool use of Lerp. Uh, well, you might be asking, what happens if I set this value to something that's not somewhere between 0 and 1? Let's say I set it to like 2, for example. Whoa, what just happened there? Well, what's happening here is I'm blending between the two textures, but I've told it to overdrive that blend. So if I think of my blend as a line that goes uh, straight between zero and one, I've just extended that line on the graph further up and to the right than one. And so I've driven uh, this cloud texture significantly past where it was intended to go. And you can also do the same thing with negative numbers. If I go negative one, now I've driven my cobblestones texture significantly past where it was intended to go in the opposite direction of my clouds texture. So you can see some crazy rainbow patterns going on right here. So when you use the Lerp node to blend between two things, you're gonna to wanna to be careful uh, that you keep the values between zero and one. All right, so here we are in the material editor of Unreal 5. And if I just right click here and look for a Lerp node, uh, you can see there's this Lerp 3 color, but that's not what we want. What we actually want is called linear interpolate. So we'll pick that one. And then, and notice here it's called Lerp, uh, but in the menu it's called Linear Interpolate. Uh, so here I'm gonna drag my cobblestones texture in and my colorful noisy clouds texture in. And just like we did in Unity, I can blend between the two of these. And right now my input value is zero. And so I'm just getting um, the cobblestones. But if I switch my input value to one, I'll get my noisy clouds. And if I switch it to 0 0.5, I'll get a nice blend that's kind of halfway in between. So I get this really interesting trippy blend between cobblestones and rainbow clouds. All right, uh, so let's take a look at something else you can do with the Lerp node. Not only can you blend with constant values, uh, 
but you can also use a texture as your blend value. So in this case, I have this texture that's kind of this uh, radial gradient, and I'm going to plug this into my Lerp node. And what you're going to see now is that here in the middle, where my gradient is white, I'm going to get my rainbow clouds, but then out here on the edges, where my gradient is black, I'm going to get my cobblestones. So, when you want to use the Lerp node, you need to have two different things that you want to blend. And then you need to have some kind of something that you're going to use as your mask. And you can use all kinds of different things for this. You can use values, you can use textures, uh, you can use other types of data as well. And I may do a video in the future where I show you some really interesting ways of creating masks uh, for blending. Uh, but for today, we're just going to stick with uh, our constant values and with textures. So here I could paint a mask. Let's say if I knew I wanted the uh, rainbow down here at the bottom and I wanted the cobblestones up there at the top, then I could paint a mask here in this texture and I can create a, a texture in Photoshop. For example, I could paint a mask that was specifically for blending the two textures together in the way that I wanted them to be. All right, let's take a look at one more example. Uh, for this example, I'm going to need a node that's called uh, desaturation. And what this node does is if I take my cobblestones here and plug it into desaturation and then plug that into base color, now you can see that I'm getting kind of a, a black and white version of my color cobblestones texture. Let's just delete this uh, rainbow clouds here. I'm going to move my desaturation down to here. And I'm going to plug that into the B socket of my Lerp. So now what I'm going to get is I'm going to plug my constant into the alpha. And so now I have control over how saturated uh, my texture is. So if I give this a value of one, I'm going to get the desaturated version. And if I give it a value of zero, I'm going to get the colored version. So you can see that I'm blending between the colored version of the texture in A and the black and white version of the texture in B. So I can go from full color to uh, no color if I just give this a value of one. All right, well, what happens a, a minute ago, I talked about how it's important that you keep your values between zero and one. Well, what happens here if I go negative? Uh, because uh, when my value is 1, I'm at the black and white version. And when my value is 0, I'm at the full color version. Well, what's more full color than full color? So if I push this past the 0 threshold and go like negative 1, what's going to happen, do you think? Let's do it and find out. So negative 1. And now I get a much brighter, more saturated version of the color. So in this case, I'm using the linear interpolation node. I'm going outside that zero to one bounds, and I'm actually getting a really useful uh, artifact here because I'm able to actually saturate my texture uh, beyond what it was intended to be. Uh, so if we go super high with this, let's go negative five. We can just completely blow out the color and get something that's more saturated than it's intended to be because we're using the Lerp node uh, to go beyond the zero to one range. So again, at zero, I have just the regular texture. At one, I have the desaturated texture, but because I'm pushing uh, beyond zero into negative in the opposite direction of desaturated, I get uh, something that's more saturated. So that's a pretty cool use of being able to use Lerp and going outside the bounds. Normally you want to keep your values uh, passing into Lerp between 0 and 1, but sometimes it's useful to, to go outside of that. All right, well that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this and that you learned something about Lerp. We we talked a little bit about, I showed you the, the math formula behind Lerp. Um, where you multiply one of your textures by your value and you mul the, uh, multiply the other one by the inverse and then you add those together. Um, but if you don't want to have to do all those, all that math, you can just use a single Lerp node instead. And we also talked about how you can Lerp 
colors, values, and textures. And for the input of the LERP, you can use uh, just a single constant value, or you can use a texture. There are also lots of other masks you can use, but we haven't quite gotten to that yet. All right, so for next week's video, I can either talk about inputs to your shader, things like uh, position, uh, UV coordinates, camera, uh, all of those inputs to the shader, or we can talk about the dot product operation. So which of those two do you think is, is more interesting or useful to you? We're going to do both of them, but I want to hear from you what you think uh, you'd like to hear first. Do you want to learn about inputs or do you want to learn about the dot product? Let me know that in the comments down below. And I hope you have a great week this week and I'll see you back here next week. Thanks for watching, everybody.